Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In today's episode, we will share a few true Home Alone horror stories. But before starting the video, please consider giving us a like and subscribe. Also, if you have any personal experiences of being alone at home, or any other scary or creepy experiences you would like to share. This was about eight years ago. I was living with my mom and stepdad in Devon, England after getting really sick about a year before and having to move in with them to be looked after. I was 22 to 23 years old. My mom had moved into the house about three years earlier and my stepdad, who was already with my mom, had moved in about eight years earlier. I never really liked the house. It's what we would say is a new build house in the UK and is on a large development site that has about a hundred houses, which are all built in the same five designs over and over. The house is a detached house with a dead end road outside and then beyond that a green strip of trees and bushes before an iron railing fence and then another road. It's a really quiet area. There's the occasional car, but not constant traffic noise, which I'm more used to having grown up in a city in Wales. As I said, I never really liked the house. There's three doors into the house, the front door, the side door, and then the French doors out of the conservatory. There was also a garage that was built into the house and had an entrance to the house near the kitchen. I just never really liked just how many doors there were leading into the house. Now, my stepdad travels a lot for work and my mom sometimes goes with them. I really liked it when they went away for a few days because I got to have the house all to myself with just the cat and I. And I really got some independence, which I really missed after getting sick. But I never really slept that well when I was on my own there. Instead. I would stay up really late into the night and catnap with the light on in the hallway and I'd keep my bedroom door open so that I could open my eyes and look straight at the top of the stairs. One night they were away. It was about 2 a.m. and I was sitting on the sofa in the living room with my laptop and only one lamp behind me. Now every door was locked and I double checked them twice before. I was comfortable in closing up the curtains which are really heavy and don't let light in around. So I'm pretty sure that no one could see the light that was on behind me. As the living room door was mostly closed, I was stretched out on the sofa with my laptop on my lap and the cat was asleep in my feet. I'm not even sure what I was doing on my laptop. Thinking back on it, maybe studying, but more than likely I was probably just scrolling around on Tumblr. As I sat there, the cat stirred and lifted her head, tilting it towards the front door. I couldn't really see the front door from where I was sitting because of the living room door being pushed to and to be honest. When the cat woke up at first, I wasn't really paying attention, and she's quite a timid cat who gets pretty startled at nothing. The cat stirred properly, still looking intently at the living room door, and as I finally paid attention to her, I noticed that the hallway beyond the door was lit up by the porch security light through the glass window in the front door. I was wary, but I wasn't overly worried straight away because I noticed that the light always comes on whenever foxes run past the house. I got up and I moved towards the living room door, but before I opened it, I could hear the handle of the door being very slowly pulled down. It was an old wooden door rather than the PVC doors you usually get, and it was basic Mortis or sash lock. I had locked the door and removed the key earlier and engaged these really flimsy bolts at the top and bottom of the door just for extra security because it always felt so insecure as a lock. I could now hear the handle being really slowly pulled down because it squeaked silently and the barest rattle of the door and I was terrified. My heart rate jumped and I felt stick to my stomach. I picked up my phone from the coffee table and very quickly down 999 into it. So I just had to press call if need be before opening the living room door. The porch line was still on and through the glass, which was frosted. I could see the outline of a man standing to the one side of the door and the handle was pressed all the way down. I froze for a second and I had no idea how to react to this. Now the handle was obviously not opening the door, but he wasn't letting go 
and I could see the door move very slightly as he then seemed to push against the door. I finally shouted out something along the lines of Oi. What the fuck are you doing? And the handle snapped back so I stepped into the hall, and now he could see me through the glass like I could see him. There was a pause of what felt like the longest five seconds of my life of us just looking at each other. And then the outline ran away back up to the driveway, and it was just way too dark to see where he went. I didn't sleep that night at all, and I just kept going around making sure all the doors were still locked. My mom and stepdad came home the next day, and I explained what happened to my mom, and she thought maybe it had been someone drunk just coming home from the pub and getting the wrong house and to try not to worry about it too much. A few years later, I had moved back to Wales, and my mom stayed alone in the house. When my stepdad went away again, well, she was in the exact same scenario as me. She was lying in her bed on her laptop with the cat, lying at the top of the stairs at about 1 a.m. My mom had her bedside light on, but no other lights were on in the house. As she watched the cat stir and then looked down the stairs directly at the door. My mom then got up to see what she was looking at and looking down at the front door. She could see someone through the glass trying the handle again. She slapped on the lights as quickly as she could and yelled down at them, and whoever was there took off. I'm not sure if the two instances are linked at all, considering the time frame between them, but if the person or people who keep trying to enter my parents' house could please go away, we'd really appreciate it. I live in a small town in North Carolina, and it's not really the kind of place that you would see any kind of criminal activity. I live in a small condo with my mom and brother, who's 16 and I'm 14. And all of this happened about a year ago when I was 13. My mom and brother were going to another city to pick up some family members from the airport, and they were planning to stay the night in a motel since none of them wanted to drive at night. I know I'm young, but I'm not that small of a guy compared to most around where I live. I'm 5 foot 11 and I weigh about 170 pounds. So even though I was 13, I'm a little built. Now that I've given you the context, I'll tell you what happened. I was playing a game called Brahala and I got hungry. So I went downstairs to go make something to eat. Now the layout of my downstairs makes it to where when you're walking down, you can see the living room the kitchen and windows looking into the house. Well, when I got downstairs, I kept hearing a scratching noise and I thought it was a cat because we owned four of them and they make those kind of noises a lot. So I didn't really think too much into it. But when I walked by the window next to the front door, I then saw something through the blinds. At this point, it was around 10 or 11 at night. So I was kind of confused why someone would even be at the window. But I didn't really want to investigate, so I just locked the door and went back upstairs. Now, my room has a pretty big window, and the roof is only 15 foot tall, and there happens to be a generator under it, and so you could climb up pretty easily. And I've done it before. Well, I had started eating and watching tea, and I had heard a tapping noise. And so I paused the tea, and it sounded like it was coming from the window. So I walked up and I then peeped through the window. At first I didn't see anything until I then saw someone hiding right near my window on the roof. I then jumped back. I don't know if the person saw me, but they had on a black hoodie, so I couldn't see their face. I then texted my mom and I told her someone's on the roof tapping on my window. And she told me to lock all the doors and windows and to call 911 if anything else happens. It was already starting to get late, so I got ready for bed, and I'd put on some music while I went to sleep. But before I could fall asleep, I then heard the front door open, and I was really confused because my mom wasn't supposed to be home. I then paused my music, and I listened and heard footsteps walking around. I got up and shut my door, and then locked it. Now, I don't know why, but I didn't call the cops. I called my mom instead but she didn't answer. Now, I didn't want to call the cops just yet because maybe they just drove back, but they thought I was crashed. But then I heard a random grown man then talking in my house. 
I couldn't understand him, but he was speaking Spanish, and no one in my family speaks Spanish. Well, after I heard that, I hid in my closet. I then heard footsteps going up the stairs, then into the bathroom, then into my mom's, and then finally the next room, which was mine and my brother's. The man walked in, and I just stayed quiet. I was really trying my best to stay quiet, but I'd moved back and I knocked something over, and there's no way he didn't hear me. I mean, I was right next to the closet door. The man then slowly began opening the door, and I started laughing while doing so. It was now time. My fight or flight instincts then kicked in, and I had a choice to make. I chose fight. As soon as the door opened up and he was standing in front of me, I tackled him to the ground and put him in a headlock. Now, this was a major struggle as this was a grown ass man, and I was only 13 at the time. But once I felt him losing consciousness, I let him go and ran out of my house, then running over to the next door neighbors. I explained the situation to them, and luckily they let me inside and called the cops. When the police arrived, they went into the house and they found him. He was still there when they walked him out in handcuffs. The man actually had the audacity to stare me down while laughing maniacally. It honestly made me sick to my stomach. The police called my mom and she came home within an hour. I don't know where the man is today or what really happened with him and I honestly don't want to find out. My parents were going on a three-day vacation, leaving my brothers and I at home. I was 15 years old at the time, and I was expected to tackle the responsibility of taking care of my brothers. Keep in mind, there was a storm that day and my brothers and I were playing hide and seek to pass some time. But halfway through the game, I realized I forgot to take my dog to use the restroom, and I told my brothers I'd be back within a few minutes. When I was taking my dog outside, I saw a car parked on the side of our yard right next to the road. It wasn't any of the cars our neighbors had. It kind of looked like a black Toyota Camry. I'm not sure though. Anyways, I just kept turning to see if anyone was in the car, but I couldn't really see anything through the storm. When I got back inside the house, I locked all of the doors and checked the windows just to be safe. I didn't want to tell my brothers so they wouldn't be freaked out. I then got a notification from my phone saying someone's at the front door. It was really weird as it was really pouring down hard with rain and nobody was expected today. I had checked our ring doorbell and I saw that there was some man, maybe in his 50. S, just standing there. He suddenly jerked his head down and looked directly into the camera. His eyes then opened and I swear I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck then stand up. I didn't want to freak out my brothers, so I told them we'd be playing the quiet game and to stay as quiet as possible. And whoever stays the most quiet wins an ice cream sundae. Maybe. About 30 minutes passed and the guy then disappeared from the camera. I still didn't feel safe, but I just told myself to brave it out. And I then looked outside through the windows again. I circled the entire house and found nothing, but that car was still parked there. I realized that there was another room that I totally forgot to look out of, and it was the sunroom. Keep in mind, in our sunroom, you can see from any angle, but anyone can see you from the angle as well. Well, I peeked out of the window, and I saw that same guy hiding behind the air conditioning unit. I was going to call the police when the guy then looked and made direct eye contact with me. I then fell backwards and got up. I glanced out the window again but he was already gone. I then ran to collect my brothers as I called 911 during this time. I began hearing a pounding on the front door. I can see you. The man was definitely wrong. In his head. I could hear that from his voice. The man then chuckled and started to slam on the door even more. I got my brothers and my dog into a bathroom and I told them to keep quiet. As I then told them the truth, I had to shut my dog's mouth to keep her from barking. I was honestly so scared that one of my brothers or the dog would make a sound and get us all killed. 
after about four minutes in the bathroom, I could hear the door break down and the man laughing. The operator told me that the police were going to arrive within a few minutes and that I need to stay quiet and hidden. So the man downstairs eventually gave up on trying to find us and just started to destroy stuff. I could hear all of our things crashing and breaking. I was cringing at it, but I kept my cool. I then suddenly realized just how defenseless we were. I didn't have a knife on me or anything. I told the 911 operator to tell the police to be quiet so the man didn't hear them. I can't really remember what happened very clearly, but it went something like this. I could hear the man grunting as I assumed he was being arrested. I opened the door and I could see the man struggling through handcuffs. The downstairs was an absolute mess. A long story short, my parents ended up coming home early and they helped us clean up and comfort us. I'm honestly still really scared staying home alone, and I don't think that'll ever change. I just want to let everyone know to stay safe. And don't ever open the door for strangers. And if you sense any red flags, please follow your gut. My parents were going on a three-day vacation leaving my brothers and I at home. I was 15 years old at the time, and I was expected to tackle the responsibility of taking care of my brothers. Keep in mind, there was a storm that day and my brothers and I were playing hide and seek to pass some time. But halfway through the game, I realized I forgot to take my dog to use the restroom, and I told my brothers I'd be back within a few minutes. When I was taking my dog outside, I saw a car parked on the side of our yard right next to the road. It wasn't any of the cars our neighbors had. It kind of looked like a black Toyota Camry. I'm not sure though. Anyways, I just kept turning to see if anyone was in the car, but I couldn't really see anything through the storm. When I got back inside the house, I locked all of the doors and checked the windows just to be safe. I didn't want to tell my brothers so they wouldn't be freaked out. I then got a notification from my phone saying someone's at the front door. It was really weird as it was really pouring down hard with rain and nobody was expected today. I had checked our ring doorbell and I saw that there was some man, maybe in his 50. S, just standing there. He suddenly jerked his head down and looked directly into the camera. His eyes then opened and I swear I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck then stand up. I didn't want to freak out my brothers, so I told them we'd be playing the quiet game and to stay as quiet as possible. And whoever stays the most quiet wins an ice cream sundae. Maybe. About 30 minutes passed and the guy then disappeared from the camera. I still didn't feel safe, but I just told myself to brave it out. And I then looked outside through the windows again. I circled the entire house and found nothing, but that car was still parked there. I realized that there was another room that I totally forgot to look out of, and it was the sunroom. Keep in mind, in our sunroom, you can see from any angle, but anyone can see you from the angle as well. Well, I peeked out of the window and I saw that same guy hiding behind the air conditioning unit. I was going to call the police when the guy then looked and made direct eye contact with me. I then fell backwards and got up. I glanced out the window again but he was already gone. I then ran to collect my brothers as I called 911 during this time. I began hearing a pounding on the front door. I can see you. The man was definitely wrong. In his head. I could hear that from his voice. The man then chuckled and started to slam on the door even more. I got my brothers and my dog into a bathroom and I told them to keep quiet. As I then told them the truth, I had to shut my dog's mouth to keep her from barking. I was honestly so scared that one of my brothers or the dog would make a sound and get us all killed. After about four minutes in the bathroom, I could hear the door break down and the man laughing. The operator told me that the police were going to arrive within a few minutes and that I need to stay quiet and hidden. So the man downstairs eventually gave up on trying to find us and just started to destroy stuff. I could hear all of our things crashing and breaking. I was cringing at it, but I kept my cool. 
I then suddenly realized just how defenseless we were. I didn't have a knife on me or anything. I told the 911 operator to tell the police to be quiet so the man didn't hear them. I can't really remember what happened very clearly, but it went something like this. I could hear the man grunting as I assumed he was being arrested. I opened the door and I could see the man struggling through handcuffs. The downstairs was an absolute mess. A long story short, my parents ended up coming home early and they helped us clean up and comfort us. I'm honestly still really scared staying home alone, and I don't think that'll ever change. I just want to let everyone know to stay safe. And don't ever open the door for strangers. And if you sense any red flags, please follow your gut. This happened around a year ago. I was around 18 years old when this story took place. My mom and her boyfriend had decided to go to a concert on a Saturday night. My mom's boyfriend didn't live with us at the time, and he was visiting her for the weekend and staying with us. He was going back to school and attending some online classes to get his degree. He really liked to do his studying and homework in the dining room. Now, the dining room is the first room you enter when you get in my house, and there's a large window that faces the front of the house in the street. My mom's boyfriend likes to put the curtains up so that my two dogs can look outside. My dogs aren't big, so he didn't put them all the way up, just enough for my dogs to look outside when they want to. So my mom and her boyfriend left for the concert and left me at the house, which I didn't really mind since I did get the big TV in the living room. Anyways, they were gone, and I went to go watch TV. After about an hour, I had heard a knock on the door. I was a bit taken aback since it was now around 9 p.m. at this time, and I wasn't expecting anyone. I went to go look at the people, and I saw that there was a man right outside, and he was kind of moving in a weird way, like jumping up and down as if he was anxious. I didn't answer it, and I went to the kitchen to go grab a knife, just in case he tried something. I have some skills in martial arts, and I know how to wield a knife as well. I calm myself down after about 20 minutes, and I put on my headphones to listen to some music and calm myself down. I usually walk around the house when I listen to music, so that's what I did. I went to the dining room, and I was about to turn back to watch more Tave, but then I saw him. The man before was now crouched down against the dining room window, looking through the bottom part of the curtain that the dogs used to look out the window. The guy actually had to basically lay down just to look through that small part of the window. We kind of just stared at each other for about 30 seconds, and I ran to go get my knife that I had grabbed earlier. I called my neighbor, who just so happened to be a police officer, and I told him what happened. He lived about six houses down from me, and he came over within about two minutes. So the guy was gone by this point. But I still told my neighbor what he looked like, which unfortunately wasn't really helpful since all I really saw was his eyes. I decided not to call my mom since I knew that she wouldn't believe me. Well, a day later, and there was a report on the news that one of my neighbors apparently drowned in a pond in my backyard. Everyone assumed it was suicide or an accidental drowning, but the pond isn't that deep. It's maybe about five or six feet, if that. So it's kind of hard to drown in a pond that's not that deep. Well, fast forward to another week, and there was another news report that there was an illegal housing for the mentally ill in our neighborhood. Well, around 11 mentally ill people lived in that house, and apparently two of them escaped before the police got there. The house was like 10 houses down from me. Now, I'm not sure if any of these things are connected or not, but the timing, well, it's beyond suspicious. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe the channel to hear more. Your support mean a lot to me. Thank you.